Hey everyone, welcome back to the Astronomy Master's program for YouTube. I'm Tony, this is Spacebook Messier, and today we'll be talking about measuring the sky. Now in the last lesson, we talked about the night sky. So everything you see when you look up at night, but how do we really take what we see and turn it into meaning? What information do all of those sites give us? Today, we'll be talking about our local sky. How do we measure and map our place in the universe? In the last video, we talked about the celestial sphere, the useful tool we have for visualizing the sky as a map. But what do you actually see when you go outside? You don't see a sphere, you see a dome. And depending on where you live, that dome has different stars visible at different times. So let's go over some key terms. The boundary between the Earth and the sky is called the horizon. The point directly overhead is called the zenith, no matter where you are. And the meridian is an imaginary half circle stretching from the horizon due south through the zenith to the horizon due north. Now, our lack of depth perception on a celestial sphere means we have no way to judge the true sizes or separations of the objects we see in the sky. However, we can describe the angular sizes or separations of objects without knowing how far away they are. The angular size of an object is the angle it appears to span on your field of view. For example, the angular sizes of the sun and the moon are each about half a degree, and we'll go over what that means. But the angular size does not in and of itself tell us the true size, only the size that it appears to be in our sky, you know? All right, check this out. The sun is about 400 times larger in diameter as the moon, but it has the same angular size in our sky because it's also 400 times further away from us. And you can actually estimate the angular size with your hand. Stick one finger out at arm's length. You see that, is that focusing? That's about one degree wide. Now you could think of one degree as one slice in a pie with 360 slices in it because 360 degrees is all around your way in a circle. So you should fit 365 fingers all the way around you like this. That's what that means. One degree is one 360th. And your fist is about 10 degrees. Now to go a little deeper into the measurement of the sky, some stars appear so small that we need to break things down a little more than one degree. And we do this by dividing one degree by 60 arc minutes, symbolized by this and one arc minute can be broken down more into 60 arc seconds, symbolized by this. So for example, we read this as 35 degrees, 27 arc minutes, and 15 arc seconds. Now to help solidify understanding of angular size a little bit more, let's say you hold a coin in front of one eye and it can block your entire field of view, like right here. But as you move further away, it appears to get smaller and smaller and it blocks, it, it blocks less of your view. So the coin's true size does not change, but what changes is its angular size, or the amount of space it appears to cover in your field of view expressed in degrees. And that's what angular size is all about. So we use this, we use this angular size to describe how much of our field of view appears to be taken up by an object. And that is how we measure the sky around us. That's how we measure distances between stars from each other. That's how we measure how big objects are like planets and the sun and the moon. So more than just measuring, in our next video, we're actually gonna talk about the movement of the stars. Why do they move the way that they do? So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.